Welcome to the Healing School today. We are so grateful to have another time to be able to bring the Healing School all around the world. And for those of you joining us on the internet, we want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad to be here over the summer and uh, throughout the year, and we're so grateful that you're joining us today. If you know somebody who's on a healing journey, man, go get them and have them join you. It's going to be an amazing day today as we open up the Word of God and hear what God's good report is for us through Joseph and Heather Z, who are going to be in the house today, bringing the Word of God. And we're so excited for them to be here with us today. And for those of you in the auditorium, thank you for coming here on our Woodland Park campus. I tell you what, every time we drive up to this campus and see all the expansion that's happening here, as we drove up today, we could see the big prefab columns going up in our parking garage. Wow, that's exciting to actually see that happening, where we're going to be able to park over a thousand cars, and what a blessing that's going to be, or vehicles anyway. I don't know, some of your vehicles may count for two cars, I'm not sure. But anyway, would you stand and greet someone that you didn't come with today, those of you here in the auditorium, and just tell somebody, God's got good news for you today. And again, those of you joining us on the internet, man, we are so glad that you're with us today. It's going to be an amazing day. And as always, we are so grateful for God's faithfulness to his word. We never have to try to make it come true. It is true. And when we believe it and receive it, we activate it in our lives and powerful things begin to happen. So as always, we want to exalt the Lord who is already exalted above every name. But we want to exalt him in our hearts and in our lives today. And so we're going to do that during a time of worship. Are you guys ready? Anybody ready to worship today? Amen. All right, let's do it. Oh, 
Bless the Lord. His presence is here. We brought him in with us. Now we're going to manifest him from us. Yes, Lord, your presence within us is a presence of miracles, is a presence of divine flow. Let's just bless the Lord. Oh, yeah. Lord, we bless you. We bless you for your presence, God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God of miracles. God of wonders. Lord, we're astonished. We're so amazed at your goodness your miracle power, your miracle presence that lives within us. This is how I fight my battles. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit. This is how I fight my battles. Oh! This is how I fight my battle. No weapon formed against us will prosper. This is how I fight my battle. Come on, singers, lift it up. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Not by might, not by power. This is how I fight my battle. Spirit and truth. This is how I fight my battles. From our hearts we declare today, Lord God. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. Come on. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you.
may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight. This is how I fight from a place of victory. This is how I fight, starting from a triumph, starting from a victory. I speak the word. I declare his spirit, his truth. And I see the mountains cast into the sea. From my heart, I speak his word. Everything that I've heard from my heart, I do my part. And I speak what I've heard, his word, his word. It's how I fight my battle not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, by the Spirit of the Lord, by the Spirit, by the Spirit of the Lord, by the Spirit, by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Father, we're so grateful that we don't have to try to fight to get a victory but you already did that part so now we fight the good fight of faith knowing we're starting from a place of victory we're starting from a place of an already finished work that's how we fight we resist every strategy every wile of the of the devil and we fight with the Word of God. We start from a position of strength. Start from a position of victory and a position of rest. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your kingdom has come, your will is done. Here on earth as it is in heaven, Jesus, you said we'd do the same works you did. Healing, deliverance, speaking to dry bones, woo, raising dead things, dead people, and greater still because now it's all over the world. Every nation, every kindred, every tribe. Thank you, Lord God. Would you take a minute right now, those of you here in the auditorium and those of you online as you're able to, and just lay your hands on someone next to you right now, maybe on their shoulder, and just begin to speak life over their bodies and blessing over their life. We start from a place of strength. We start from a place of victory. Oh, yeah. We start from an already finished work. We could never do what Jesus has already done. He fought the fight that we couldn't fight. But now we fight the fight of victory. We fight the fight of triumph. He always causes us to triumph again and again. Overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. Overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony. Yeah. Overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. Yes, Lord. Our bodies are now the temples of the Holy Ghost. We say sickness and disease, you have no place. 
in us. You've got no place in us. Lord God, we thank you once again that this place is filled with amazing grace. Woo! Faith righteousness. We're standing in your finished work, Lord God. Fully accepted, fully beloved. All because of you, Jesus. Now, Lord, we just give you all that we are and have this afternoon. Everything within us, God, cries out to say, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, yeah, but all that is within me, all that is within me cries out to bless the Lord. God, you're the one who did everything that needed to be done. And we hallow your name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Name above every name. Lord, we come. We come just as we are. and We lay our lives down at your throne. Thanking you, God. Thanking you for who you are. Thank you, Lord God. I don't know if anybody else feels it. I feel like the atmosphere is right for a miracle. If we just release ourselves, hallelujah. Oh, how I need your grace more than my words can say. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. In all my weaknesses, Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Oh, let's lift it up today. I will rise, stand reading, heaven open over me to your name eternally, endless glory. broken place. Come on. Broken, you are my righteousness. You are my righteousness. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. And I will rise. I will
Jesus, we come. Thank you, Jesus. We come, Lord. We don't draw back, but we draw near. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What a price you paid. Thank you, Lord God.
refreshing living inside of you flowing out from you bless 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 too blessed to be stressed anointing that breaks every yoke Every yoke, every yoke, it's no joke. Anointing that breaks every yoke, living inside of you right now. Oh, yeah, anointing that's living inside of you. 
rivers of water flowing through you too. From the one we call faithful and true. Thank you, Jesus. God, you didn't just put us down here and say, hey, uh, good luck, y'all. But Lord, you said, I'm leaving now. I've done what needed to be done. But I'm going to send you another comforter just like myself. And he's not only going to be with you, but he's going to live in you. <laughs> he's going to be your teacher. He's going to be your guide. He's going to be your helper. And he's going to take you to the other side. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord God. To where we can say whatever we're going through, Tell somebody, I'm going through. <laughs> Whatever I'm going through, I'm not getting stuck. Whatever I'm going through, the good news is because of Jesus, he said we're going to the other side. I'm going through. I'm going through. That's what he said. I don't know why we get all so stressed out when we have a God who cares for us like he does. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Do you know that not a single weapon formed against you can prosper? Oh, the devil can form the weapon, but it won't prosper. Every word spoken in judgment, the sword of the Spirit comes up from the inside of you and says, out, off. And that thing falls, it drops, it has no power, it has no life. Woo. Everybody go, woo. This is working for your good. This is working for your good. The Word of God's alive and doing what it should. This is working for your good. Oh, yeah. This is working for my good. Sing it out, sing it out. Working for my good. The word of God's alive and doing what it should. This is working for my good. See, a lot of people think you have to make the word of God come true. It's like Disneyland. Except it's not. You know, you don't have to wish upon a star and just. Oh, Jesus, make it come true. <laughs> see, his word's already true. All you got to do is believe it for him to see you through. He'll take you to the other side. This is working for my good. No matter what the devil throws, this is working for my good. The word of God's alive and doing what it should. Come on, everybody. Here we go. Ready? Come on, step it out. This is working for my good. The word of God's alive and doing what it should. This is working for my good. Hallelujah. This is working Better sing it one more time. This is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, here at the Healing School, we typically go about 30 minutes for worship, but how many know in the Holy Ghost there is no typical?
Ooh, thank you, Lord. Today, as we were getting ready for this um, gathering, man, I just had such a sense of expectation, Joseph and Heather, and, um, and all y'all. I just came from South Carolina. They lost our luggage, and we were down there ministering all weekend, you know, on a, on a healing, um, what was it called, Tracy? Not healing explosion, but healing. Uh-oh. <laughs> Clearly, we need healing. <laughs> A healing explosion, healing revival. <laughs> and it was awesome. <laughs> but coming home, we hit all kinds of storms getting out of uh, Augusta and trying to get into uh, Atlanta. And we finally made it home night before last at about 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I said... Earlier that day, we actually uh, prayed and agreed with the pastor. I said, you know, no matter what happens, I'd rather be sleeping in my own bed, even if, it's in the, if, even if we get home in the middle of the night. Well, so be it according to what you speak. Amen? <laughs> and the Lord reminded me, this is working for my... At 2 o'clock in the morning when we couldn't find our way out of the airport. <laughs> we parked in the west end of uh, DIA. And when you go out, there's one level that if you park on, which was the level that I parked on, level three, that you can only go out of certain elevators to get to level three. And so we went out of one of the elevators where they said we could go out of, and literally there was a cement wall in front of the, in front of the doors that opened up. And after about six times of going up and down steps trying to find our car, I finally said, this is not getting fun. Right? I know. And then they lost our luggage. So yesterday, getting ready was kind of interesting. We kind of went into camping mode. But I was so glad it wasn't today. How many know, though, no matter what the devil throws at you, he can't win? Because you've already triumphed. You've already won. This is working for me. Hallelujah. This is working for my no matter what's going on this is working for me. come on we better sing it one more time yeah this is working for my now i know we've got a little longer today but that's okay because you know what we don't have a convention we're setting up after today right tracy there's nobody saying we got to be out of here by a certain time. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing one more song. And the reason why I want to sing it is because it's going to be a declaration today of what God's already done and what he's doing in this place. Amen? And Michael Washburn, whose wife died back in November of cancer, is now a student here at Karis Bible College. And you know what? He didn't uh, allow what the enemy intended for harm for his life to take him out. But instead, he pressed in, and I'm telling you, it is such a testimony to see what God is doing in this young man's life. Everybody who is younger than me is a young man or a young woman, by the way. And all of my students are kids. Yeah, it doesn't matter if they're 65 years old, they're still my kids. Yeah, Papa. Come on. <laughs> tell somebody, if God's for you, you can tell the devil to forget about it. That's what's happening here in this place. In this place. Have your way. The moment that we see you, we are changing. Yeah. We see your glory. Yes, we do. We see your glory. In wonder and surrender, we fall down.
Jesus, you change everything. All oh, lives are healed. Everything will oh, change. We're just so grateful for who you are. We celebrate your grace in this place, in each of our hearts, each of our lives, knowing, God, that you are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the author and the finisher. And, Lord, every part of a spirit, soul, and body, we yield to you. We say, God, there is no other beside you. Lord, you are worthy of our worship, worthy of our praise. And we bless you and give you all thanks today. Ooh, what a great time just to celebrate his grace. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to break away to a video. the biggest healing outreaches of Andrew Womack Ministries is Healing School, which ministers to people around the world every week. And we asked the director, Daniel Amstetz, how this concept for a healing school came about. Andrew was getting stopped in the hallways in between classes where people were asking him to pray and he was happy to do it, but he literally didn't even have time to go use the restroom because people were so wanting to receive healing. And so that was the original idea of what could we do to make this easier for our own students and then how could we train our students in how to minister to others. But it really has become something much, much bigger than we ever originally imagined. What started out as a way to minister to the students at the Colorado campus quickly became a tool that would take the power of healing to the far reaches of the world. Not only are people coming to the sanctuary for healing school, sitting under the teachings of Daniel Amstetz, Carly Teredes, Dwayne Sheriff, and many more. But thanks to our live stream, as well as our archived episodes, people in every time zone and in every country can receive these messages, and most importantly, their healing. Through the archives, three years after something has already been taught and archived, somebody's watching this particular healing school in Africa and a word of knowledge that was communicated that day when it was taught 
is received three years later in Africa and a woman receives a supernatural manifestation of healing in her body. And so what we've really uh, experientially come to know is that there is no expiration date on the Word of God. People are receiving healings all over the place from the internet. Not only is Healing School live streamed and archived, but we also have an annual conference called Healing is Here in August, as well as Healing School on the Road, where we visit several cities across the country. Of course, none of this would be possible without the generous support of our friends and partners. Through the partnership, we really are able to reach a global audience. We're able to do something so much bigger than we would have ever been able to do otherwise. Become a student of Healing School every Thursday at 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Click on the link below to learn more or to watch any of the archives. We'll see you in class. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? Now that's more like it. You know, Daniel was up here and he was saying that he was expectant. When our guest came in this afternoon, I said to him, our guest speaker for this afternoon, I was like, I am so excited. I am so excited. I am really expecting. And it's not that God doesn't show up every week, because God shows up every week here at Healing School. How many of you know that? But how many expectant people do I have in the house this afternoon? That's what I want to know. How many expectant people, excited people to hear what God has to say? Well, welcome. Welcome to Healing School. We are so glad that you could join us this afternoon. As the video has said, we meet here most weeks on Thursday between the hours of 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We have our online family that is watching with us every week, and we are so glad that they do. Do you know they watch us on Facebook Live? I mean, Gospel Truth TV, the archives, YouTube. So they are constantly watching with us, and they are watching all over the world. Do you know that it is not an accident whenever you watch us on Healing School and when the speaker, whoever is speaking to you, they call out a word and they call out something and you're like, oh my goodness, how did I get to tune in? They're speaking directly to you. That is just how our God is, right? Well, you know, as we meet here at the end of the service, we always have our power-packed healing prayer ministers to come up here and they're going to agree with you in prayer. Online family, as you know, because there may be somebody that is visiting us for the first time online. And I want you to know that even though you can't be with us here on campus in Woodland Park, what you can do is you can dial 719-635-1111. And we have exciting prayer ministers that are online, ready to pray with you. I will also encourage you to go to karisbiblecollege.org. We have so many extension schools. Do you know we have 70 all across the world, not just in the United States, but all across the world. If you go online, you can see when they have sessions, when they're meeting, because even though it's summertime, some of them I think are coming back into session, and then you can see the times and the addresses and where you can meet with them. Amen? Few announcements for you. As they also said in the video, healing is here, is coming up. Who's been to healing is here before? Oh, are you coming back this year? I hope so. I hope you have registered also. The reason I'm saying that is because we are selling out. Do you know that we have over 1,600 people registered to come to Healing Us Here this year? Oh, it's going to be impactful. The dates for that are August the 14th through the 17th, and we're going to have a session up here also, we may have overflow because like I said, it's gonna be a lot of people here. So you need to get here on time and get in your seat. In the mornings, who are we gonna have? Our very own director of healing school, Daniel Amstutz, him and Carly Terrades. They're gonna be teaching you all about healing in the morning. Then in the evening, we have Andrew Walmack, we have Barry Bennett, we have Audrey Mack, she's from France. She's gonna come and share with us. And we have Randy Clark. Does anybody know Randy Clark? Okay, well, you will if you come. So, so I would suggest that you definitely tune in. We will be live streaming it as well if you cannot get here, but I'm telling you, you do not want to miss that. And also in August, anybody that's watching us online, 
I want you to know Andrew is going to be in the Chicago area starting August 23rd to August 25th. If you go to the website, awmi.net, you can find out the location and the times of that event. You don't want to miss it. He would love to say hello to you. Andrew always loves to greet his guests. Now, we know that with Andrew, he is so excited about giving away teaching. You can go to the website. You can hear his CDs and everything like that. He's always giving away stuff. So because we are disciples of his, we too at Healing School love to do that. Where are all my first time guests to Healing School? This is your first time at Healing School. You have never been here before. We are so excited that you are here. We are so excited. Now, my brother James here, he is going to be the one that's going to give away these products. And I'm just going to explain to you, since this is your first time here, we're here at Healing School. We are about excitement, excitement about Jesus. So it depends on how excitable you are for James. That will just stir him right to you so that you can get the gift. And we all like free things, right? Well, the first thing I want to give away is uh, Carly Teredes. She has this confession card. I so love this card. I even put my name in it. In the top of it, it says, I am, and then it says, put your name. So I put, I am Tracy Asia. I am a, a party waiting to happen. First Peter 1 and 8. I'm telling you, this is so power packed. When you read this and you read through all of the scriptures that she has here listed, I'm telling you, talking about energized for your day. When I read this, I told my, uh, some of the students last year, I said, I read this every morning and I'm just so power packed when I get to work. Not that I need any more energy than I have, but it's still good because it's all for Jesus. So if, first time guests, if you could just raise your hand, James will get that to you. How many of you enjoyed worship? Did you not enjoy that worship today? I'm telling you. We, I'm giving this, this right here is the Healing is Here. Like I said, the Healing is Here conference is coming up this month. And from that, Daniel Emsteads and the Karis worship team, we have a CD. And if you enjoy this from today, you will not want to miss this CD. We have this back there. We have We Come Alive. We have The Best Is Yet to Come. We have plenty of CDs for you. And this, these songs are scripturally based. So when we're singing things, we shouldn't just be singing anything. It should be based on the word of God. Amen. Healing is here, CD. Like I said, you got to show James. That's how he operates. <laughs> we like to have fun here at Healing School. Doesn't the Bible tell us that the merry heart does good like a medicine? Isn't that a scripture in your day on your way? That's a scripture. A merry heart does good like a medicine. And I love fun and laughter. And it's all for Jesus. That's what it's about. And I just look at my product table back there. Antoinette is back there working hard. Her and Jennifer are back there waiting to help you. All of these things that I'm giving away today are back there on our product table. And if you go and see them, they could tell you about all the specials and everything we have. This book that I'm going to give away is what we're all here to talk about. God wants us well. It is his desire that we're to walk in health and wholeness and not to be sick. It is the enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we know that. Well, Andrew wrote a book about it, and it talks about God wanting us well. Because sometimes people just think, well, God is trying to teach me something. If God is trying to teach you something because you're sick, then why are you going to the doctor trying to get well? I'm just saying. God wants you well. Back there, we have these on special today, and if you buy one, you get one free. You can buy the book and get a CD free. You can buy the CD and get a book free. It is totally up to you. So you do want to go back there and see all of the amazing products that we have for you today. Amen? Somebody is getting it when I say excitement. Somebody is getting it. I'm telling you, they are so getting it. Online family, you know what? You may not be here with us on campus, but you can go to awmi.net or karisbiblecollege.org. If you click on store, you can see all of the items that we have available so you too can get in on the fun of purchasing these items. And you know what? Sometimes the items are not just for us. 
we can get them for early gifts for people, for, or just to bless somebody and to sow a seed into somebody's life and give them something. Because people love to receive gifts. And it's just, like I said, it's just a way to plant a seed for them. Today, when I was thinking about testimonies and what testimonies we could share today, because, you know, we get blessed by hearing people's testimonies and how they've overcome in healing. So I just pulled this video because I thought that this would be a great one to show for you today. So I want you to take a look at the video and see what Pat has to say about her testimony of healing. As directors of Caris Bible College in Walsall, England, Ken and Pat Chang saw miracles happen on a regular basis. Little did they know that when Pat started experiencing some abdominal pain, it would take everything found in the teachings of you've already got it and God wants you well to stand against the enemy's attack on her life. This is the healing journey of Pat Chang. I started to feel abdominal pain. So I, I spoke to the pain, I commanded it out of my body. And I thought I'll have a hot drink, you know, perhaps that will just help me. So I had a hot drink. But as the evening progressed, the pain got stronger and stronger. My stomach, I could see that my stomach started um, just bloating up and getting bigger and bigger. I heard this groaning throughout the night and I would just raise, rest my hand and I just pray. We would pray, it would go, I would talk, great, she'd start to sleep and then seconds she would be up again. The pain got even worse. I felt as though my stomach wanted to, to burst. And I remember waking Ken up Saturday morning and saying to him, take me to the accident and emergency unit. I know I'm constipated, I just need them to give me an enema and that will solve it. That morning, as soon as we get to accident and emergency, I heard a voice said, no operation. They said the scan shows that you have a bowel obstruction. Before we knew it, um, I had a tag on my hand. They had put a drip up and they had a, a bed for me. When I got back there, they have our and a drip, they have our tag, they have a bed, and they said to me, you can't go where we are taking her. And I thought, this is so fast. It almost seemed like my life was being taken over. It was like my life was being taken away from me. The surgeon said to me, um, okay, Pat, this is the situation. The both scans have shown us that you have a bowel obstruction. This is serious, he said, and we are literally going to cut you from just below your breastbone, right, right, right the way down, about a, about a 10 inch um, uh, cut and opening. A complete bowel obstruction often requires surgery to correct or remove the cause of the obstruction. During the surgery, a segment of damaged or strangulated intestine may also be removed. I said, well, there's got to be a, you know, that's plan A, operate, what's plan B? And they said, what you mean, do nothing? You know, that's the only other option, that we do nothing. I said, well, do you know what? I think I'll take that option. I said, let's take plan B. And I could see the team were like, sort of rolling their eyes and like, she, she doesn't understand what we're saying to her. If you go to your problem and say, cancer, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out of this body. I command every cancer cell to die. If you talk like that, then it means that you understand authority. I remembered, no, God wants me well. This is not from God. This is not from God. And she said, okay, have it your way. We're gonna, we're gonna let you eat and because this is what you want. So I, I just said, thank you. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. I would prefer to do that. And they left the cubicle. We already come into agreement that we know it won't be um, an operation. It would be complete restoration. Although the medical staff thought she was crazy, Pat stood on the truths found in God wants you well and put her faith into action. When the hospital recommended for safety that she have a light salad for lunch, Pat knew her healing would not be manifested by playing it safe. It was like the Holy Spirit saying, Pat, what's going on here? A cottage cheese salad? No way. You, you're healed. You know, you're healed. You eat. You have what you want. And I, I, I said, what else is on that menu? I said, is there any pudding? And she said, well, we have um, double chocolate chip 
sponge with custard, I said I'll have that as well. And um, so I did, and they bought that for me, and I, 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 I ate the lot. We, we agreed. We then said at this point, right, we are speaking to these bowels, and we are going to speak a creative miracle into these bowels. We are going to command um, new, new, new intestines, new colon, whatever's needed. We just said, we want new right now, and bowels, we command you to move. We command you to be perfect, we command you to be whole, and we command you to be healed. All I could see that Pat would be well, because that's what we agree, agreed on, and that she would be well, and I was just wondering how quick would she get out. For the first time in a week, I had a bowel movement, which was pretty amazing, considering they could hear no movement at all in my bowel. My bowel, they said, was just not doing anything at all. Monday evening, um, I had another meal, you know, a, a proper full meal, and there was no sign of any sickness. There was no sign of any vomiting. There were none of the symptoms that they said would happen. Pat was released from the hospital with no signs of there ever being a bowel obstruction. Today, she and Ken share this message of healing from a place of experience, knowing that it was only made possible through getting Andrew's revelation of God's unconditional love and grace. I know the gift of God. I know the life that God has given to us through the teaching, Andrew's teaching, God wants you well. That has really been a, a root, a uh, seed that has taken root in, in, in my heart through, through being part of this ministry through being privileged to have gone through the Bible College. Without this teaching, I don't know if I would still have a wife around, but because of this teaching that we receive here at Caris Bible College, our lives have been transformed. Our entire family have been transformed. Pat's story is one of many examples of the countless lives that have been transformed through the teachings made available by Andrew Womack Ministries. To our friends and partners, we say thank you. Because of you, the message of God's unconditional love and grace continues to be multiplied throughout the world. Did that not bless you? I know it was a little long in length, but I wanted you to see it. It's actually longer than that. So, but if you go to awmi.net, on that website, you can see her story, the full complete story. You can see a lot of other um, healing journeys. You just scroll down to the bottom and I think it says ministry focus. You click on that and it'll take you to all of the other healing journeys that are happening. I just wanted you to see a snippet of when you come, when you come to healing school, when you see these prayer ministers standing up here, they're graduates. Some of them are graduates, some of them are current students. And those are the students that are getting that same teaching. I didn't even realize that the book, one of the books she read was God Wants You Well, but that's just so God. That's just so God. So I just wanted to share that with you because I thought that it would bless you today. And at this time, I will have my sister. She will come up and give you an opportunity to give. Wow, wasn't that testimony just inspiring? And also what Daniel was saying about what we're doing here at Healing School, it's so important um, that we send this message out around the world that God's love is in healing too. And so we want to give you an opportunity to sow into that today. And so I'm going to ask the ushers if they would please pass out the offering envelopes, please. When you give in to us here, it goes towards us training our students to be effective prayer ministers. And then it helps us to send them out on mission trips all around the world. So your giving goes a long way and we really, really appreciate your support. And so there are obviously four ways you can give today by cash or by check. If you're going to pay by check, please make it payable to Caris Bible College or CBC. And on the offering envelope, there is provision to put your credit card details if you want to give in that way. Please seal the envelope. And there's provision to pay online as well to give. And so if you're watching online, then please visit our website at charisbiblecollege.org. And if you scroll right to the bottom of the page, there's the donate button. So you want to click on that. 
And that will take you through to our giving page. And there's a button on there which says, I think, donate to Caris Bible College. And then that will take you through to our AWM store. And on the left-hand side, I believe, there's a button called Student Mission Fund. So if you click that, you'll be able to put all your credit card details in and either give a one-time gift or partner with us monthly. And so the Bible says, doesn't it, that we should support our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to spread the gospel all around the world. And the scripture we have for this is 3 John verses 5 to 8. And I'm going to read you the amplified version. And it says, Beloved, you are acting faithfully in what you are providing for the brothers, and especially when they're strangers. And they have testified before the church of your love and your friendship. You will do well to assist them and to send them on their way in a manner worthy of God. For these traveling missionaries went out for the sake of the name of Christ, accepting nothing in the way of assistance. So we ought to support such people, welcoming them as guests and providing for them, so that they may be fellow workers for the truth that is for the gospel message of salvation. So it says that we're being faithful when we operate in love and friendship when we give. And it also says that we do well when we send them off in a manner worthy of God. And so what is a manner worthy of God? Well, I believe it's a um, a heartfelt gift um, in our giving. And the last verse also says that we will be fellow workers for the truth. And so we want to make sure that we are thinking about where we're spending our money or where we're sending our money because we want that to be supporting the truth of God's word, don't we? Amen. So I'm going to ask the ushers to please receive the offering and I'll pray over the offering. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege to sow into the truth of your word and to send it right around the world to to many men, women, and children who have never heard of this message. And so we thank you that it will be multiplied and blessed, and it's been sent with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm now going to welcome the Director of Healing School, Daniel Amstead, to the stage. Thank you, Julia. Wow, what a great day it's already been today, and we again want to thank you for being a part of the Healing School. I want to thank Aaron Moraine for ministering last week uh, while we were out on the road ministering. What a blessing it was to have her minister. We had some issues with our live stream. The internet went down here on our campus that day, and so there were some issues with the live stream, but ministry still happened, and it was powerful, and I've heard lots of good reports, so I appreciate Aaron Moraine. But if you did miss that teaching, it will be archived on the website and you'll be able to get it as well. So uh, excited about uh, all that God is doing here through the healing school and the fact that we get to have this year round. You know, even though school is out, uh, well, the uh, September enrollment finishes kind of mid-May and then our November enrollment uh, finishes about the second week of July. And so we're able to have the healing school pretty much all year round. And what a blessing that has been on so many different levels. But I want to personally just say thank you to you for coming and being a part of this uh, whenever you can. And man, bring people. You know, uh, Andrew was in a conversation one day with a particular man and he said, you know, uh, my dad has been coming. He's a Presbyterian and he's been coming to the healing school uh, almost weekly now for months and months and months and is getting so much out of it. And uh, the man who was telling, the son who was telling Andrew about this, was so grateful that his dad had this opportunity, uh, even from a Presbyterian background, to come and to sit under this kind of teaching. So whether you're a Baptist or a Presbyterian or a Methodist or whatever you are, man, you are welcome. Whether you're not none of the above, amen, you are welcome. Everybody is welcome. And so we're just blessed, blessed, blessed. And today we are super blessed to have my friend, Joseph Z in the house, come on, and Heather, his wife Heather, and uh, Joseph Z, for those of you who do not know, has a Facebook Live uh, interactive discipleship. His vision is to make disciples through media, and so every morning, usually at about 8 o'clock, he is on Facebook Live, and if you have not yet connected to that, man, I just want to really encourage you to do that. It's an amazing time of edification and ministry, both from the teaching of the word and prophetic ministry, 
And uh, Joseph heads up uh, several different entities within their ministry, Voice of God conferences, Kingdom Youth. Uh, Kingdom Youth is sponsoring uh, an event in August of 2019 here on our campus. And one of the main speakers is going to be Todd White. And so that's going to be a real blessing, and Kingdom Youth and Karis Bible College are working in conjunction, and it's going to be an amazing event. So we are so excited today to have Joseph Z and Heather in the house again, and would you welcome them for the first time to the Healing School. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We are so blessed that you are here, my friend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Love you. Well, praise God. How are we doing this afternoon? Is my microphone on? Can you hear me? Yes. Praise God. Well, you're going to be blessed by what you hear then. Praise God. It's going to be a good afternoon. Well, my name is Joseph Z. It's a great privilege to be with you today. There is a, I consider it one of the highest honors in the body of Christ to stand at Andrew Womack's pulpit. Um, amen. And I, I just speak uh, life and honor over that. I, I was a, hey Clay, good to see you brother. I was a, um, a closet Andrew Womack fan for a long time. <laughs> and because uh, I was in a really hardcore ministry and all that stuff. It was an awesome ministry, but very hardcore. And uh, I would listen to Andrew's entire Bible commentary. I would listen to all the teachings. And I'd be doing uh, that during a season when, when I would do construction and also uh, going to Bible college full time, two small children, and doing ministry every weekend. And my wife Heather and I were doing that. So I'd listen to Andrew. And uh, one day I decided to come out of the closet. Amen. So, <laughs> so praise God. So I just want to say to everybody, this is, this is going to be a great meeting. I want to say this to you. I feel the Holy Spirit stirred me up as we about started this meeting, as we stepped into it. I feel that he is saying to many people here, the devil has been forging plans against you for some time and getting ready to spring it on you. He's getting ready to formulate something. It's already in your mind. There's things that he's trying to lead you down a road with, even internally and in your mind. And I want to say to you, this meeting this afternoon, this session today, we are going to set the plans of the devil back by years. We are going to mess his plans up so bad today, he's not even going to know what to do with himself in your life. So it's going to be a good day, so praise God. Look at somebody next to you and say, you should get ready. Praise God, it's going to be a very good life-changing session. So here we go, we're going to talk about some awesome things today. Before we do and we jump in... How many of you know that there's the, the understanding of knowledge is a big deal? you got to have good working knowledge if you're going to have good working faith. If you don't know something, you can possess it in the spirit, but have no access to it because you're, of your knowledge. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that today, and I'm just going to jump in. We're going to jump right in. As you see, there's a beautiful whiteboard here. This is the exact same whiteboard I use at home. Praise the Lord. So I just want to show you something that I think is going to really help you. How many of you know that the very... Um, belief system you were brought to Jesus in is indeed the belief system typically that you just go with. Did you know that? The belief system that you came to Jesus in, think about it for a moment. If you were brought to Jesus through a Lutheran persuasion or through a Methodist persuasion, if somebody brought you to Jesus and said speaking in tongues is of the devil, and you come to Jesus through that. And then, then all you know is that that's what you know. And you don't know why you know it. But because that's what Papa and them always did. That's what we do. Yeah. Right? So that's what, that's what we begin to understand. So I'm going to draw something for you. And I think it's going to help craft something that will give you victory in the area of your believing. Amen. Okay? Let's take a look at this. Can you guys see this whiteboard? Here we go. I'm going to draw something amazing here. Praise God. Let's say that this represents the body of Christ. This represents the life of the believer. A guy named John Wesley came up with this concept, and it was actually tagged the Wesleyan quadrilateral. But let's say that everything in the body of Christ is based on Scripture. Okay? And then tradition. Then we have experience. And then we have rationality. Okay? John Wesley thought this made up the life of the believer. I'll just put like this. Okay? When we're looking at this, most people, every different denomination, every belief system that we come from, we all believe that we have it right. Yeah. 
How many of you think you have it right? Amen. No, <laughs> you do, amen. But here's what I want to say is most people believe in their denomination, where they come from, their persuasion. They believe that what they believe is right and everybody else is wrong. And they say, well, why do you believe that? They say, well, because we believe the scripture. We believe the Bible. We believe the word of God. You know, how many of you know there's also a saying in technologies that goes like this? If you torture the data long enough, you can make it confess to anything. Did you know that? Yeah, you ever see people that they don't believe in things, so they torture the data until it fits what they've experienced? Anyway, when we're talking about this today, we're talking about people say our belief system is based on Scripture. Everybody says it's the Word of God. It's based on this. This is what it is. But actually, it is their tradition that it's based on. People get born again, and they are not immediately brought to Scripture. Now, this is a blanket statement. It doesn't mean that everybody is saved didn't come by reading the Bible, learning about Jesus, and giving their heart to Jesus purely by the Word of God. But most people are led to Jesus either in a meeting or through a relationship with someone, and they are not introduced to the Scripture. They're introduced to their dun 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 tradition. They're introduced to their tradition. <clears throat> now, tradition can be good. You know, we did a tradition in this meeting today. We did some songs. We enjoyed that. The worship was powerful. And I'm just so... Daniel, you and my life, I don't have the words. I'm so thankful for who you are. And, and Tracy, I, Daniel says things to me sometimes that are literally like truth bombs through the Holy Spirit that I can't even, I don't, I'm just like, hold on, stop talking so I can gather what you just said in my mind. It, it's amazing. I just so appreciate Daniel Amstutz. He's been a voice of light, revelation, and life into my life. So I honor you, Daniel, and I thank you for you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus, for Daniel and Tracy Amstutz. So when we're talking about this, though, we're talking about tradition. And what was I just saying before I went off on a complimenting rant? Tradition? Form, yes. So many people begin to say, hey, there's tradition and tradition is bad. But tradition is not bad. Tradition necessarily isn't bad. We did that today. We had worship. We had a set. We did these things, and we did announcements, and we get ready to do the message. And that's a tradition. How many of you know Christmas is a tradition? And, of course, people get all wound up about that. Don't you know it's a pagan holiday? Well, so is your $1 bill. Stop it. <laughs> well, Christmas is a pagan holiday. So is Easter. So is this. Well, have you ever looked at the signs on your $1 bill, how demonic that stuff is? You don't, don't see anybody throwing that away. Okay, so anyway, so we understand, <laughs> we understand stuff about it. Tradition, some of it is good, but here's what we've got to recognize. Some tradition always stops the word of God. Uh, particularly when we come into the understanding that, hey, I'm going to uh, get baptized with the Spirit. So you may be under the persuasion of, in your background, and it still fights you today, even with healing, that you're looking to have Jesus touch you and bring you to a place of breakthrough. But in the back of your mind, you still have this voice saying, I don't know if that's really of God. I don't know if it's really of God. Because what happens is, you have a tradition, and one day, you're going along and you have an experience with something. You might meet a fiery, baptized, tongue-talking believer, and they have an encounter with you where the favor of God washes over you, the strength of God hits you, and all of a sudden you have an experience, and you go, my goodness, this is amazing. You turn around and you go back to the tradition, and tradition's response to that is, we don't like that. <laughs> they don't like that at all. So you go from tradition, and many people, they go back to tradition that doesn't like it, so they get back under submission to it, and they'd rather just stay there to not rock the boat. That's the place of many people's position in religion today. Now, when you realize this, sometimes people say, I don't know, this encounter was too strong. Then they go to scripture, they find out what was true, and they run it through their rationality, and what begins to happen is they might have to change their tradition. Too many people are changing the word of God to fit their tradition as opposed to making the word of God the, the demonstrational fact that changes your tradition. We got to be in a place where we are adjusting our tradition. If you say, I don't know if I believe that, but the word of God shows it and there's proof of it, you need to change. You need to change. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I, I, I remember the first time I saw Dave Duell. Anybody ever seen Dave Duell before? Anybody here? Yeah. 
First time I ever saw Dave do well. Okay, I was 13 years old. And Daniel's known Dave since the beginning, you know? And uh, I was 13 years old when I saw Dave do well. I'm in this meeting, and I remember he walked up there and started to do things that I thought was off the chain. Couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I, and, and I come from a family that was very adamantly on one side of my family against the things of the Spirit. I'm talking against, <laughs> okay? And so I go to this meeting, and I see Dave do well. He said, who here has got asthma? Somebody runs up and gets healed of asthma. They fall on the ground. He starts laughing and says, used to have. Yeah. yeah. Dave does that. He brings my brother up who had a twisted ankle. He prays for him. The ankle straightened out in front of my face. <laughs> I said, I have allergies to bee stings. He prays for me. The last thing I remember was the ceiling. <laughs> and people say, was it a, what is a courtesy drop? Have you ever been in a meeting where they're like this? And all of a sudden people are like, oh, oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's a little tickle me Jesus meeting. Oh, it's, you know, okay. But in that meeting, when he did that, there was no, I didn't even see it coming. I'm on the ground. The Holy Ghost, like, knocked me out, TKO, or just KO, right? I'm on the ground, and I wake up, and when I came back around, I know I was totally healed because shortly after, I got stung by bees right in the throat and face, and no reaction whatsoever. And so I just got to say to you, this stuff works. So we are going to really discourage the kingdom of darkness today. We're actually going to become a crushing disappointment to the kingdom of darkness today. We're going to set his plan back so far, he's going to be trying to figure out what he's going to do in his war room to get back into your life because you're going to discourage him so bad today. As a matter of fact, you're going to be in the place today of mocking your sickness. You're going to get to the place today of mocking your pain. And you say, you mock my pain. No? Over your head? Okay. It was too much, too soon. That was Princess Bride. Come on. Okay. Anyway, so when we, we understand this stuff, you got to realize this, though, that when we're in that place, you can actually get to the point where the truth becomes so alive to you, it becomes so alive in your heart that your reality, no matter how loud it is, the truth will overcome it. It will overcome it. I'll give you an example of this. I was like totally overflowing with an Andrew Womack teaching on healing. Many years ago, my daughter Allie, who's right here. By the way, Allie and Heather, would you please stand up? This is my daughter and my wife. <clears throat> Praise God. <laughs> so Allie was a little toddler, and she's in a, in a high chair, and all of a sudden one day she broke out into these crazy hives that looked like she had sandpaper all over her body, all over the place. And we'd just been, we'd been just absolutely being in the spirit, meditating on healing, doing all these things. And as we're doing that, I remember I had such a thing click in me for healing. It just snapped on the inside, like, healing works. This stuff is real. And the truth of the spirit became more real to me than whatever I was looking at with my eyes. So in that moment, I went over to Allison, I walked up to her, put my hands on her, and I said, sandpaper skin? I command you to go in the name of Jesus. I'm looking at her, nothing changed. And all of a sudden, I just had a revelation that it was almost funny to me that her skin looked like that. Not because it was funny <clears throat> in the natural, but actually it was funny to me because the spirit was more real than the natural. And then I said, as it is in the spirit, so let it be in the natural. And I didn't care if I saw anything or not, and I tell you what, Within a second, 50% of it went away. And then with another, another probably 15, 20 minutes, completely gone. Like perfect skin. Perfect skin. Allie was also dead in the womb for three days. She is dead in the womb. And uh, Heather went in. We went into the doctor. They did an ultrasound. They did all these things. We checked it out. And uh, we said, hey, can you tell us what you see? And he said, you know, I can't. By legal, le legally, I can't tell you that. But uh, sometimes, you know, you see a dead baby and you can't tell people. You know, he just went on doing it. And uh, the, the next day, it had been three days, no movement in the womb with Heather. And on that third night, the Holy Spirit came to me and said, lay hands on her stomach and command life. And I said, okay. Laid hands on Heather's stomach and I said, hey, little one, live. You live. And the next morning, we woke up. Her feet were kicking, pushing down the belly, all this stuff. Right after that, we got a letter from the doctor saying, if you need grief counseling, if you need this or that, we regret to inform you, your, your baby has died. I don't know if that it thrills you at all, but it thrills me a lot. Praise God. So 
So these kind of things are real and all that. Now, I want to talk about the Word of God just a little bit. Let's jump into the Word. Let's, let's get an understanding for this. Everybody say this after me. Say, first in the natural. Say Say it again. Say, first in the natural. Say then the supernatural. You know, many people believe that it's all spirit first. Spirit first. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 46. 1 Corinthians 15, 46. The, nat- the spiritual is not first, but the natural. Then comes the spirit. And it's using the comparison of Adam and Jesus. Adam being the first man and Jesus being the life-giving spirit that became a man, right? So we recognize this in 1 Corinthians 15, 46, that the, na- the spiritual is not first, but the natural is first. Everybody say the natural is first. What does that mean? Do you know what it means? It means this. This natural world, well, let me ask a question first. What do you think is the greater reality, the natural or the supernatural? Now, most people are going to answer the supernatural, but they don't know why. We say, well, we're in, we're in a meeting. We're believing for healing. Come on, Joseph, lay hands on us, you know? And we're going to get there today. Praise God. We're going to smack the devil out of some of you. Praise God. (laughs) Meaning sickness. Amen. And so when we get down to this understanding, you got to recognize this, is that the natural is first. And why is the natural first and the supernatural second if the supernatural is the greater reality? The supernatural being the greater reality means this. The supernatural was not birthed by the natural. Think about it. The supernatural was literally not created by a bunch of guys sitting around and going, we want to have a supernatural experience, and they birthed it. It didn't come out of this natural. The supernatural gave birth to the natural when God the Father, the great God, the living God, said, let there be light, or light be, be light. When he said that, the supernatural gave birth to the natural. Therefore, the supernatural is the parent force of the natural. Does that make sense? So yet in 1 Corinthians 15, 46, we see that it says the natural is first, not the spiritual or the supernatural. Why is that? Because you and I, it's actually a privilege. It's a privilege, actually. You and I have something that spiritual entities do not possess. The only one who does is Jesus. And that's called a physical body. Okay? But the natural being first means that by nature and what we do every day, we wake up in the morning. You don't wake up in the morning unless you've been really in the spirit speaking in tongues. You don't wake up in the morning going, Woo! Good morning, Jesus. (laughs) If you do, I like you. But man, that's probably not your, your mainstay every day. Okay? You don't wake up in the morning being like, Woo! Good morning, Lord. Some people wake up and they're like, Good Lord, it's morning, right? Yeah, they roll out of bed, they're like, oh, get me coffee, or how am I going to function? Jesus, okay? Now, you got to understand this. you got to understand something about this, that the spiritual gave birth to the natural. Now, the natural is what we fight every day. We fight it every day. This is where the fight is. If you can overcome in the natural, and you can begin to overcome your belief system, what we talked about, your tradition, and you can literally say, whoa, I need to cut off this whole thought of second-guessing healing. I need to cut off giving it a second thought when a symptom jumps on my body. I need to cut that off and I need to be first responder to the truth of God's word. And when you settle this fact that your emotions, your body, your physical experience does not run the day, it doesn't run the show, it's the spirit that runs the show. When you can get to that place, you have become a true disciple of Jesus. You're becoming mature. You're becoming all that God's called you to be. You say, well, what does that mean? What does that look like? It looks like this. In Hebrews chapter 5, at the very end of the chapter, it says, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And the senses there are not some mystical, weird, spiritual sense. Those are your five senses which you can smell, taste, touch, hear, see, all that stuff. That's what you begin to discipline and train and put into reason of use, and you practice it into submission. When you get your five senses to surrender to the spiritual truth of the word of God, oh, you'll become a wrecking ball to the kingdom of darkness. A wrecking ball. 
my wife Heather, probably six, seven years ago, we were doing meetings nonstop. We just finished five weeks of meetings, five weeks of meetings, and the meetings will last eight to 12 hours each. And we prophesy over hundreds of people, okay? Prophesying to hundreds of people. And uh, as we were doing this, it began to be clear to us that Heather was getting tired. And I thought maybe I was just running her thin, you know, and all this stuff. Maybe she's just too tired. And we were doing a Bible college, and we've done some Bible colleges ourselves and all these things, doing this Bible college. And at the end of class, she was having pain and all that. We go into the doctor, come to find out she had double kidney failure. Double kidney failure. And in the process, the doctor came in and said, they looked at her, evaluated her, because we didn't know what was going on, and, and we were kind of in a different mindset at the time. The doctor looked at her and said, you're going to die. You're going to die because of your size, the way your blood works, all this stuff. You actually need a transplant, or you need something now, or you're going to die. And he left the room, said that. You know, doctors are kind. They're saying what they know to say. He leaves the room, and I walked back in there. Actually, I was standing there when he said it. Leaves. I walked outside, and I had tears streaming down my face because I, I love my wife. I turned around and came back in, and just like an anger got on me and said, I cut off every word that was just spoken here. And now I'm saying this because we were in a battle where we were kind of double-minded in the area of healing. Is it God's will? Is it not God's will? And if you're double-minded in the area of healing today, you need to settle that. You need to settle that. Without going through the whole story, my wife ended up getting a transplant only after she had received full healing. She had received full healing, and I had people jump on me and say, are you sure? And uh, she stepped out of dialysis. If she missed one run of dialysis, she would have uh, potentially could have died, is what they said. She'll swell up. Her heart will flood with fluid. She'll die. And uh, so she got a word from God, stepped out of dialysis. And when she did that, she stepped out for two weeks and missed about six dialysis appointments. When that was over, somebody came to me and we said, hey, she's healed. You know how you get excited, you want to tell somebody? So I said, hey, she's healed. Uh, my wife is healed, Heather's healed. And it was somebody I greatly respected. And they, they looked at me and they're like, hmm, because they knew how dire our circumstances were. And when it was over with, the next day I got a phone call and they said, if you do not take her back in right now, we will hold you responsible for her death. How you know that's encouraging? That was very encouraging. I, was, I still think about it today and I'm so encouraged. You know, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> and so, so, so we're there and, and, uh, and they, it was, they told me, you know, she's gonna, if she dies and she's going to die, you know, you're just, you're just playing with your lives here. This is foolish. And they just began to attack me and attack me and attack me. And I had not settled it in my heart. I knew that God healed. I knew things happened. But it wasn't a warfare plan to me. I wasn't ready to go to war for it. And that, that was a breaking point. So I've had to repent of regret in the fact that when they jumped me like that, I, I caved and I came to Heather and I said, are you sure you're okay? Are you really sure you're okay? Because I'm looking at you and you seem okay, but you got you to level with me. Are, we, are you faking it till you make it? And she said, no, my levels are great. I, everything's working perfectly. I have no swelling in my ankles. I, I'm wonderful. Everything's working. I said, are you sure? She said, why? Does something look wrong? And I said, no, I, I just, I'm not sure. And through that conversation, within a day, she was back in a dialysis chair. Now, God met us, gave us grace. We got a supernatural kidney transplant. But that wasn't God's best, but God made it the best. Amen? Right. Now, here's, here's the, the second part of that. Heather had such a word during one of her trials in that, that she had blood clots come up inside her body, and these blood clots came up into her throat, and it was choking her one morning. It was choking her. She couldn't breathe. She couldn't talk. All these things. And I was preaching a meeting. We were doing a meeting in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and uh, Andrew Womack happened to be in town that night. And so did Ashley Teradez and some of the gang. You know, they were there. Carries his family to me, Dan. I love you guys. And so... Anyway, so we're there, and all of a sudden, Heather looked at me and said, the Lord spoke to me that I am to go and see Andrew Womack. And so I said, you do whatever's in your heart to do. She went there, long story short, waited till after the meeting. He couldn't pray with everybody because he had to go. All these things were happening. And it just so happened that through a series of meetings, Heather, the Holy Spirit told Heather, you stay put. Everybody cleared out. She was all alone in the big auditorium. And then somebody came by and said, can I help you? And they said, you know what? Actually, it was one of the security guys. And they said, can I help you? And uh, you should get prayer from Andrew right now. 
and brought her up to the front. And when she was up front, Andrew came walking out and he was able to lay hands on her. When he laid hands on her, um, the blood clots were in her throat and Heather couldn't even get it out. You know, I, I, I'm going to die is all she could say. <laughs> Something like that. And needless to say, he prayed for her. And when it was over with, um, nothing changed. But within two days, miraculously, all those blood clots that were going to her brain, they were going to have an emergency medical meeting the following day, all of them dissolved. They were gone. So that happened through that kind of setting. And then after all this kidney stuff, we went to war regarding healing. We decided to go to war regarding healing. Do you know why sometimes we don't get healed? We're too passive. No, no, listen to me. We're too passive. I think about Clay and the healing that Clay received. I mean, he had a very serious thing going on. He got healed, and Clay, just what, you summited 58 14ers? That's pretty cool. So much for the devil. I think that 58 14er was kind of like, hey, devil, how you like me now? Yeah. 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 So now listen to me. If you don't get serious about the fact that the Holy Spirit wants to touch and flow through your life, if you don't get serious about, I'm going to go to war against sickness. Now, sickness is already done. It's, it's a finished deal. Daniel teaches on it so eloquently that your sickness, you're not the sick trying to get healed. You are the well holding off an attack against your body. That's what it is. And in that process, you must get the mindset that says, I literally hate this sickness. The other day, because, you know, Daniel, uh, I've learned watching some things with Daniel and through healing. The other day, I, uh, it's probably three in the morning, I'm getting ready to launch a new book. We're getting ready to go on XM radio, 30 million listeners, okay? We're getting ready to do all these amazing things, and I'm getting geared up, and I have to produce material, and all of a sudden, I had something just attack my back. Like, I couldn't even move, and it was so painful. It was probably 2, 3 in the morning, and I roll out of bed, and I'm like, oh, Jesus, this hurts. <laughs> and Heather's like, wow, I've never seen you in that much pain. I'm like, a little compassion, honey. I can, I can barely breathe, you know, and, and I'm in that place. And all of a sudden, I found myself getting mad. I mean mad, okay? You know, the actual word for mad is insane, so I was actually angry. I was angry, not insane. I was angry. I was very angry at the sickness, I found myself getting angry, and I said, okay, I have authority over you, get off me, and I could barely move. I couldn't even lay down, I couldn't sit down, I couldn't move, I had to just stand. <laughs> when all has been done, just stand, amen. And so I was there, and I literally just looked at this thing, I said, you get off my body, I, you don't belong to me, I give you no rights, all these things. When it was all said and done, I finally got irritated, and I said, all right, all right, if you're going to keep me up, if I'm staying up, you're staying up. If I'm up, you're up. I said that to the darkness, and, and Heather's like, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and I did, man. I stayed up all night. I stayed up all night. And I, all of a sudden, every time the pain would hit me, I would start laughing at it, yeah. like hysterically, with tears coming down my face. Ha, 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 ha. If people would have heard me, they'd have said, man, lock that guy up. He's not very cool. It's something not well in that home, you know. And so I was just laughing hysterically. And you say, why would you do that? Because I was diminishing its authority or its privilege to speak in my experience. I was diminishing it by mocking it, by laughing at it, saying it's already finished inside of me. So I'd begin to laugh. Ha, 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 ha. And you say, that sounds like a fake laugh. No, it's a faith laugh. And I was like, ha, 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 I'm going through it like that. All of a sudden, it turned into hysterical laughter. Ha, 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 ha. And the pain would grab harder, and I'd be like, whoa, ha, ha. You're laughing now, but I got healed. Yeah. Something that would have taken me a month or two months to recover from with therapy and all that stuff. Uh, finally, Daniel came over. He laid hands on me too, and I was still fighting against it. He laid hands on me, so I started carrying tables right away by faith. Yeah. You know, and, and people are like, well, you can't you do that. I said, no, no, I received a healing. Amen. And you know what? It works. Amen. It works. And so here's the deal. We've got to come to the understanding that if we're going to get violent over these things, we realize the natural is first, not the spiritual. So what do we do? We bridge the gap from the spirit to the natural. And bridging the gap takes a natural action. You have a natural body. You are a natural body that's standing here right now. But you are not that. You live in the spirit. You're a spirit. You possess a soul. You live in a body. But your body is natural. It gives you authority in the natural. So what you do in the natural has a corresponding action 
in the supernatural. And you might say, well, how does that work? I don't understand. I'll tell you in just a moment. But let me say it again. How you do or what you do in the natural has a corresponding supernatural reaction that begins to happen in the realm of the supernatural. And it works like this. People say, well, I don't know if I believe that. How many of you know there was an Ark of the Covenant on the earth? Did you also know there's one in heaven? There's an ark on the earth and an ark in heaven. And people say, where do you think the ark is today? I think it's in Ethiopia. That's just me, but I'm a Bible nerd, so that's, we'll just leave that. Anyway, so the ark of the covenant that's on earth is a parallel to one in heaven. How about the temple? We know the temple in the Old Testament. There's a temple on earth and a temple in heaven. And he said, be sure that you do all the measurements. God said to Moses and all the people that built the temples, he said, follow everything, all the instructions I'm giving you, because I want you to mirror what is in heaven on earth. And you say, well, what does that have to do with what I do here causes a reaction in the spirit? Let's talk about giving. You know, in giving, when you give, you receive, right? And you say, well, yeah, we understand that. In good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, sowing and reaping. We understand that. But do you know why? Do you know why it works? Because here, mortal men give tithes or they sow. Okay? Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8. Here, mortal men give. And over here or there, he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. You say, what, what does that mean? It means that there is a here and a there principle. Everybody say it. Say here and there. And religion says there is way out there. There is actually right here. Here and there. So here people give and there Jesus receives them. That should help some people if you've ever given some time and you say, that ministry was crooked or I didn't like this. Somebody did that. I can't believe what they're doing with that. That's not your business. Get over yourself. When you gave, was it about you or about the kingdom? Oh, no. Is that too much? Maybe it was too soon. Praise God. You should smile at me or everybody will know. Praise God. Anyway, let's say here's what we realize, though. <laughs> here's what we realize, though, is this, is that the, the here principle of the natural, literally, literally, is what we must do. We must act according to the word of God, the finished works of Jesus, but you activate what is there by your faith, by a faith action based on the word of God. That's why we discipline our five senses to be exercised so we can discern both good and evil, so we can function and do actions that cause a supernatural reaction. I don't know about you, but in the areas of giving, receiving, healing, speaking in tongues, casting out demons, all these things, I want to be a conduit for in the natural. When I do something, I induce a supernatural reaction. You've got to learn to induce a supernatural reaction. And you can be in a perpetual seed time and harvest time with a supernatural reaction. In other words, you lay hands on the sick. In the, in the natural, is it the laying on of hands that when I touch somebody, does that heal them? No, it is the faith action in the natural that induces a supernatural reaction that comes out of the realm of the spirit and into the natural and manifests into the natural. Now what happens is many times we induce it, but we don't see it all the way through to full-term birth. We start it, but we don't see it through. Well, I got prayer, but it didn't work. No, you didn't work. Is this blessing people? Are we okay? Is it, you just seem so quiet. Maybe I should really take it up a notch in here. I'm just kidding. But here's what we recognize. Here's what we recognize is that many times we do things in the natural and we do them and then we don't see a return and that's when offense tries to come. That's when offense comes. And I saw this other person healed. Why am I not healed? Their child got healed. Where's my child? Why is my child not healed yet? When you've got to realize it's done in the spirit. And you've got to get violently active to see that released into the natural. Now let me add an addendum to that thought as well. We got so violent in some areas of faith trying to get healed that it became worse. Yeah. You ever been there? If I just say it enough times, if I do it enough times, if I do this, no, no. Real grace and real faith is totally resting. 
And you say, how can I logically quantify this? You can't. (laughs) What you do is you get into the spirit and the Holy Ghost is the best teacher and he'll lead you into all truth. He'll lead you into all things. He'll lead you into how to function to get a supernatural reaction. I remember the first time Heather, after she got healed, we went to Brazil and we were preaching down there and she walked up to a a young guy that was in the meeting, or I think it was a young guy, and he had eczema all over his arms. And she is a healing machine. Like she has a livid hatred for sickness. And uh, she walked up and grabbed this young person's arms, wham, and slid it off their arms like a sleeve onto the ground. Yeah. And people are like, that just happened. And I was like, yeah. Amen. Happens all the time. And, uh, and, <laughs> and uh, somebody got their deaf ears opened up. We had blind eyes healed. We had AIDS healed. All that stuff in some of our meetings. And, and you know, it, like, you, know, you got to just remember, when stuff like that happens, you just got to pretend like that happens every time. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. People say, uh, how, did it, <laughs> I, praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We are going to see some powerful things happen here this afternoon. It's going to be powerful. Let me talk to you very quickly, very quickly. I know we're in a teaching crowd. This really helps you, but we're going to have a little demonstration, show and tell this afternoon. Praise God. We're talking about the here and there principle. When we're understanding this, Luke chapter 7, or 17, verse 11 through 19. Let me just give you this. I'm going to read it quickly. But Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19. This is talking about the 10 lepers. Everybody remember this story. It says, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Verse 12, then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. Verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Notice how they cried out. Do you see them crying out? They're crying out, Jesus, help us. Jesus, help us. How many people have you ever seen that were actually in uh, meetings or healing services or anything like that that literally said, help me, Jesus? That's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. So they said, help me, Jesus. They're doing all these things. Help us, help us. Verse 14. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. And verse 16 goes on to say, and he fell down at, on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Verse 17, so Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? He goes on to say, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, arise, go your way, your faith has made you well, whole. King James says whole, right? Everybody say whole. Whole. Now Jesus had spoke to him. There's There's a parallel here in a dynamic. Let me just say something about this. We recognize what healing is, right? Healing is these guys cried out for, for God to touch them. He did. He did. He touched them. They got healed and they left, okay? One comes back, one comes back, and he is touched, and he is made whole. Do you know what whole means? Yeah, everything's back to its original state. I mean, you lost everything before, you get healed, you stop the ailment, maybe leprosy in this case, they lost their fingers, they lost their feet, they lost their face, they lost everything, right? And all of a sudden, Jesus says, you're healed, you're cleansed, and as they went, they were cleansed, the sickness stopped. And they looked the same, but they were healed. Wholeness is, this man is here, and all of a sudden, he literally gets a touch from God, and as he goes, he was completely restored. Wholeness means you had no nose, your nose comes back. You got no finger, your finger comes back. You put your left hand in. (laughs) Amen. And so, you recognize this, though, is that Jesus healed and made him completely whole. But what was the prerequisite for that? The prerequisite for that was thanks. It was gratefulness. And you say, wait a second, what's that all about? I want to tell you, there's a power that unlocks from here to there, getting a supernatural reaction. It's called thankfulness. You can be in the middle of the worst pain you're experiencing, and you can still find something to be thankful for. 
Thank you, God. Did you know that you can actually use thankfulness like a weapon? The devil finds it very frustrating when he's trying to work against you and he can't get you angry. He can't get you flustered. He can't get you concerned and crying and falling apart. And, oh, Jesus, what did you do? What did you do? If he can't get you there, you've got a lot of power in the tank. Because if you've literally taken up your five senses, you've mastered them, and you turn every circumstance into thanks. Now, people misquote that scripture that say, give thanks for all things. No, you give thanks in all things. You're in the middle of all things. You give thanks. You're walking through a tough thing, and you say, I'm giving thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, I got thrown out of my house at 13 years old because I received Jesus. Not for some strange rebellion thing. I got chucked out, 13. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And half the family loved the Lord. Some didn't and all that stuff. And I became friends with God. I got to know God. Like, really get to know him. When I used to walk into high school, I'd read the whole New Testament once a week. Not to make me righteous, but because I wanted to know God. I walk into high school and I had people that were practicing witchcraft manifesting class on me. I'd go to parties and people hated it when I came to parties. I'd go to parties to witness. Everybody's getting plowed and falling all over each other and I'd come in there to witness. I walked into parties and I'd just be like, hey, I remember one time they knew so much that uh, uh, about, they saw me cast out demons right in high school, different people did, that this one person manifested demons at a party, totally manifested them, started throwing people around the room and they called me. They did, man. I, I went there and I come into this, this house and I'm with a few people and uh, this one guy who's with me who I'd said, one day you're going to see me cast out a demon while we're in high school. He's like, you're crazy. No, what are you talking? You're crazy. So we get there. I walked in and he's standing there with me and I looked into this room and this, this little girl is throwing people against the wall. Okay, like full of like, like exorcist stuff, you know. And I'm just like, this is crazy, man. She's doing all this stuff. Walked in there, and she's doing all this. And all of a sudden, um, I just said, hey. And she looked at me. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know? and, uh, and my friend looked at me, and he's like, she's all yours, man. All yours. And, and he, he goes outside. <laughs> and I'm in there, and I'm just like, hey. I said, you come out of her right now. She's like, ah. It drops on the ground, you know, the whole demonstrative stuff. It's pure demon drama, you know. <laughs> And I, and I walked over to her, and there's a few other people that are against the wall watching, and, and uh, you know, it was like a movie, man. I, it's you know, like a good action movie, you know, like when Chuck Norris shows up, hey, you know, it's, anyway, <laughs> it was awesome. So I walked in, it's true, you know, it's like, I'm going to take this leg and hit you on this side of the thing, anyway, and so, anyway, I, I was literally, I think that's a Billy Jack movie, anyway, and so I'm in there, and I, I, I walk into this place, and this girl hits the floor, she's writhing, doing all these things, and all of a sudden she's like, I'm going to bite my fingers off. Ah! You know, she like said it, I'm going to bite her fingers off. Starts putting her fingers in her mouth to start chewing them off, like gnawing. And I ran over there and this faith of God came over me, I pulled her hand away and put my fingers in her mouth. You know, and uh, these people are like, oh my God! Oh my God! You know, against the wall, like, what, what are you doing? I, you know, <laughs> and so I cast the demon out of her. You know, and I, I don't recommend, if you do a deliverance service, don't be like, Joseph Z said, put your fingers in the mouth. <laughs> it might be like a snapping turtle anointing. <laughs> you know, and you're going to have to get whole. <laughs> okay, anyway, and so I'm in that place, and as the, <laughs> I'm in that place, and I cast this demon out, and I, I get her to her senses, and I say, you need to receive Jesus. She receives Jesus. We walk outside, we go looking out in the backyard, and all these people are standing there from the party. They're standing there. And the one guy said, hey, she's better. The one guy said, you are so weird, man. You are so weird. And everybody scattered, you know. But I just got to tell you, when you start to know God, you start to know who you are. And then you get a revelation of what is done for you in the spirit. A revelation of what's done for you in the spirit. Man, you get some hot sauce on you. You're not afraid to go into places and do things that other people don't do. You know, and that's what I mean by becoming aggressive over your sickness. When sickness hits your body, I view it no different than casting out a demon. Right. Amen. And wherever your doctrine is, well, is it a demon? Can a Christian be possessed or oppressed or are they just holding hands with a demon? I mean, what is it really? You know, <laughs> who cares? Honestly, who cares? I don't. There's a demon. Bye-bye. 
This is where we could have a selah, which is also known as an air guitar solo. <laughs> Whatever. And so we realize this, though, is that you get down to that point and you recognize something that the same demonic force that wants to control your mind, it wants to eliminate your positive experiences, it wants to destroy your family, doing all these things. It's the same exact spiritual makeup that wants to make you sick that wants to fight you. You need to fight sickness like it's sin. You need to fight sickness like it's literally a demon-possessed experience. Now listen, there's grace. There's grace in this. If you're in torment over it, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm interceding. Rest, be in grace, trust the process. It's gonna happen, it's gonna unfold. And even if you don't, even if it doesn't, you're going to heaven. Does that bless somebody? <laughs> I remember one person came to me and they, were, they, had, they had cancer everywhere. I said, hey, you get to go to heaven before all of us. You should be happy. They didn't like that. <laughs> but I really meant it. Because I'd been in the word of God and I said to him, I said, hey, even if this doesn't manifest in your body, like you, like you have every right for it to and like belongs to you, and it should, even if it doesn't and we can't explain it, you get to be with Jesus. You get to be with Jesus. One day I'll have Heather come up and tell you a whole story. She broke her neck when she was younger in a gymnastics accident. Broke her neck, literally was on the table where they were scanning her neck. She broke, broke L1 like Christopher Reeves. C1, L1, whatever that is. She broke C1 like Christopher Reeves and literally was on the table, operating table, and she died. Left up out of her body. Went up past the roof. And all of a sudden, she was in another open place. And the, whole, the holy God of Israel was there. And he, oh boy. <laughs> wow. Mm. God's going to touch some people today. I'm like super prophetic. Do you like that, Marcus? I feel stuff. So... People are like, what does that mean? Well, hold on. And anyway, we, oh, Jesus. And I don't mean that in a weird way. I just, I feel stuff. I felt the Holy Ghost show up when I said that. He's going to touch some people today. Praise God. If you came here for something, we didn't get all dressed up for nothing. We aren't playing today. Hallelujah. Well, actually, we are playing with the devil's mind. So here's what we recognize is that Heather left and she sat in the hands of of the living God and he talked to her I'll let her share that another time we'll be back here in a few weeks but what I want to say about it is is that in that encounter you begin to recognize death is nothing it's actually awesome and I think that's why we know so little about heaven right now or we'd all be like I'm sick Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I'm going. Jesus. Jesus, take the wheel. You know, that's, that's what people would be like, right? <laughs> they would too. So I think we just don't know enough about heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. I have so much more to say, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You know, the Holy Ghost and I, we work in agreement. Technically, God doesn't need us, but I need him and he needs me right now. I saw somebody on the live broadcast, you have a gallstone. There's a gallstone inside of your system. I don't even know where that is. Gallbladder, I guess. And I saw it, it was a stone, and that's been the pain that causes reflux inside your body. That's what's been going on. And so I say over you in the name of Jesus, God is healing you right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. You are well. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Now, I know we're going to do healing school format. We'll begin to pray over people in a moment here, but praise God. 
Should I take liberty, Daniel? Or? Okay, brother. All right. Hey, the maestro, the maestro said it better. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I feel a couple people are so desperate for their breakthrough. You're so desperate on the inside. It literally is like a, a, an overwhelming sense of, I know this, I know these things, but I need, I need something to happen. Somebody's got to touch me. Something needs to happen. I need something to happen. Is that anybody right now? Keep your hand up where it is. Stay, stay your hand up just where it is right now. Keep it up. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You've heard all the teaching, you've heard the stuff, but you need some real horsepower right now. In Jesus' name. I need you to get up here right now. I need you to come up here. Come quickly. Get up here. Line up right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen, brother. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to stand here for just for a moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. All of us, you know, we hear things and we hear stuff and it's so good, but there comes a point where we stop rehearsing and we start executing. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Katrina, are you going to lay down some awesome beats? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Okay, before we start breaking into ministry here, I'm going to stand here just for a moment longer. I felt that in my spirit. There's somebody watching on the broadcast right now. You're watching the Karis Bible College broadcast. You're watching Andrew Womack's broadcast. I want to say to you, God is touching you. I see somebody holding a child. You're literally holding a child right now. I say over that child in the name of Jesus, God is healing both the, uh, the molecular structure inside the seeing, the breathing, and the function inside their brain and their throat right now in the name of Jesus. I come against that. There's been words spoken over your child, and I break that. That mind will function perfectly. It will not turn out as you've been told. It's a blessing. There's a blessing on the child. In the name of Jesus, I bless that child right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Heather, you should come up here and, and Daniel, you take your liberty, whatever you think. Praise God. I'll follow you too, brother. So thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm going to have Heather uh, go quickly and begin to lay hands on people. Now let me talk about Heather for a moment when she does this. I have a, a teaching prophetic gift. I do move in healing. We all do. But Heather literally has a gift of healing. Like a gift. It comes through her like fire. Okay? And she's going to walk through here and she's going to impart to you. And now it's not about feeling things. Maybe you'll feel electricity. Maybe you feel nothing. It doesn't matter. We are imparting the real stuff here today. Praise God. So healing school does every Thursday. Amen? But we're doing that today. We're going to impart the real stuff right now. So, Heather, I want you to take your liberty and go quickly. And I feel like I'm going to minister to a few people out here while we're here. I had a whole teaching that I was going to just wax eloquent with, and Holy Ghost had different plans. So thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes we come and we do so much talking, we should just do more execution. Today is execution day. Oh, I hate sickness. And I love you guys. The devil, God hates sickness. God hates your sickness. God wants you healed more than you want to be healed. God wants you free more than you want to be free. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Heather, you just go for it. You just go down the line, start laying hands on them. Now remember, we have a lot to lay hands on. Let's do it. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Marcus, eight months. You're walking with eight months, and then eight months, you're coming into the ninth month. In the ninth month, it's going to be a similar to a birth pattern for you. In that ninth month, the Lord says, I'm going to begin to uh, mature the pathway of what belongs to you. The door will open for you. People are going to come around you. I see two specific people that are going to say, we're going to partner with you, and they're going to help you get it done, Marcus, and it's going to work. I honor you, and I love you. You're my brother, and you are a legitimate, true, prophetic voice. And I honor the gift of God inside you. Thank you, Jesus. If you've never gotten a word from God from Marcus, I'm telling you right there, that's some real stuff right there. That man's got hot sauce on him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. 
praise you, God. There's something about somebody believing for three times more in their finances. There's a three times more thing. You've sown something and you're expecting a threefold return. You've given something and you're expecting three times return. I don't know what this is, but it's specific. Somebody has expected this. They've sown and they said, I expect three times more. That's a strange number, but I, that's what it is. If it's somebody watching or in here in the name of Jesus, that's yours. That's yours in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sir, here in the polo, uh, the blue polo right here in Jesus. Actually in front of you, sir, right here. Yep, this man, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, are you in ministry? You work here at Karis? Okay. God has... Okay, student. I see a ministry God's birthing in you. I see God working this ministry out. I see God beginning to unfold a ministry process with you. And uh, it's going to be involving being a leader over other leaders. And God's going to give you that position. So you've taken a step back from a number of things to obviously get your training. But God's going to equip you in a way where I see a pastoral persuasion that begins to flow out of you. And God's going to use that in a mighty way. And people are going to live as you begin to mentor and disciple men. Mentor and disciple men. And there's going to be great strength with that. I see that unfolding for you, and it's going to work, man of God. God is with you, and, is, and, and he is functioning through you right now. So I bless you, and I see that ministry mantle coming upon you in the name of Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, also the man who did stand up in the beginning back here, I say over you right now, sir, in Jesus' name, the hand of God has touched your life. God has marked you and branded you. I see that even caused a split with some things in your life, and it took a stand for you to be all that you needed to be. And the Lord says, I have seen that stand. I've seen the stance, and I'm going to continue to honor you and bless you through the word of God that I've given into your life. I'm going to strengthen that, and what you have done, the sacrifice, has not gone unnoticed. And literally, it's been poured out like water, and the Lord says, it's been a sacrificial offering to me, and therefore, there will be victory. Thank you, Jesus. I see colorful leaves, I see all these things, a seasonal change, all that, and I believe that that means that in that time, you're going to see that God's been with you every step of the way. Here's the word of the Lord to you. Actually, when your foot steps into a green forest, okay, the sun is going to be really bright. People are going to make mention of how bright the sun is and how unique it is in that moment. And the Lord's going to say to you, in that moment, I've been with you every step of the process. And this word will come back to your heart. And you'll say, wow, God, you've been with me. And he'll say, yes, now plant. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Isn't this good? Praise God. We're opening up a can on the devil. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we're doing. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Bilandravasidravat. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I can't wait to be here again a, a year from today with Todd. When we're together, Todd and, and Ryan and I, we're going to be here. We're going to be doing a youth conference. And uh, I was working with Todd in Brazil. That man's a wild man. He, yeah, he, yeah, Todd White, he goes jumping off the stage. He ministered to 2,000 people in about 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I was like, Todd, man, praise God. I just got to say to you guys, God is going to touch this place mightily. He's touching you right now. Sir, in the yellow shirt, thank you, Jesus. Uh, in the yellow shirt, you got an action hero haircut like I do. So, yep, action hero haircut. That's you and me, you and me, yep, amen. And so when I'm looking at you here, I see this. I see that God's given you the mind like an engineer. He's put things into your mind for concepts and principles and how to blueprint things out and put it into order. And God's given you that understanding and that ability, and he's walking that through. And also the Lord is saying that it's, he's going to need your mind in a technical, legal way after this season is done. There's going to be technical legal things that you come alongside of and God's going to use your mind with concepts and abilities to craft things out. And some of it will be foreign to your understanding, but God's going to work with you in that understanding as well. There's a supernatural anointing on you to bring uh, concepts to pass. So I bless you in Jesus' name. That's working for you right now. Hallelujah. And business. There's a business leg of what you're going to do. That's going to be very good for you. And it's going to work out well. And God's going to multiply that. And I see a lady that speaks into that. And you go, wow, that's a good idea. It'll breathe life into it. And God's going to cause that thing to unfold well for you. So I bless you. You're exactly where God wants you to be. You needed to get a key so you could go open that door. You're getting the key right now. 
Amen. Does that make sense to you? Good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't this great? Everybody, I know that we're just standing here. I want you to get in faith, though. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to really get in faith. I want you to lock in with Jesus. When Heather comes and releases an impartation to you, it's going to work. It's Trey, right? Trey? Praise God. Trey, every voice you hear is not a mentoring voice. That's really important. Just because people come along and they say to you, hey, I want to mentor you, doesn't mean that that's God for you. Okay, because you have, you have a very free spirit and you have a lot of people that want a piece of you. Okay? And so it's important that you listen to that man right there. That man on the front row? It's, it's okay. As long as you know. If you listen to that man, you're going to be all right. That man is the voice of God to you. Right there. And if you'll listen to him, you're going to get real horsepower and victory. He'll save you. He will save you five to ten years of effort. Okay? You're awesome. I actually really like you. And when you've got a marked man, I mean, a little bit of hippie, a little bit of wild, I mean, you got all this going on. You're a marked man, brother. you got a lot going on. Now, you're going to heal the sick. You know that. God's going to use your hands to heal the sick. Hallelujah. But the Lord says a little bit of order is in order. And as you put order to the plan, and as you allow this crafting of order to come into your heart, it won't be like metal in your hands. It'll be forged into a weapon. Because right now you have raw metal in your hands. And it's awesome. And it's hot metal. And it, it's like, it's hot to the touch. Look at this. Look at what I can do. God's with me. But it doesn't do anything yet. And God's saying through crafting and this discipline, and it'll be crafted into a sword, which for your personality is not always easy. You'll be able to cut through anything if you'll surrender to that process for a season. And I'm telling you with that man. I, Trey, I know you by name. So I just, I love you, brother. You're a warrior. Brother, I know that we one day, like Daniel and me and other people, I know that someday we could stand back to back in a field, and if all the enemies of hell were coming against us, we'd be like, do you got that side? Because I can't look over there. And you'd say, I got him. And I'd say, I got this side. That's the kind of man you are. Don't give your heart to the wrong people. God bless you. You're God's man, Trey. You're God's man. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woman of God right here, woman of God with the beautiful English accent, woman of God who's walking away from me, woman of God. Hi, yeah, uh, I, I don't know your name, I'm so sorry. Uh, Julia, you, you're amazing. Uh, here's what I want to say is that I believe that God, I saw multiple pages turning, and when I see multiple pages turning, this is either a journal or it's a manual or it's a book, and God is bringing things to pass for you with a, a volume of writing that's going to come out of you that people need to read. And it's almost like either you're editing this for someone or you're helping uh, put things together or you're going to do it. But I see, I see multiple pages and when people read it, similar to when you get up and speak and people go <sighs> in a relaxed way because you bring, you bring a spirit of peace to you, uh, to them, when they read whatever it is you put to page, they're going to go <sighs> That's what I see. I saw you walking. I saw pages flipping. <sighs> so that's what I see. Amen. You're a cool lady. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, Daniel's writing a book, and we got to get this book done, guys. Anybody in this place that ever wants to give into a writing of a book, you should maybe donate to a book a little bit. You know why? Because it's going to change lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody okay when I did spirit fingers? Praise God. Yeah, come here. Here, I'll use this. Hallelujah, Jesus. I hear the Lord saying, I am a consuming fire. I am the Lord your God, a consuming fire. And those things that are needing to be taken care of, he is burning them up right now. They are being consumed with Almighty God. They're being, yes. They are being consumed right now. Hallelujah. The things you're believing for, the things you've been asking for, the things that you have been speaking, Come that on. impossible thing. The Lord said, I am the possible. He is the possible, Come on. and he is here right now as a consuming fire, burning up the very things that have resisted you and have opposed you because you have an assignment for your life, and that assignment is with Jesus, and there's nothing by anything that can harm you because that consuming fire is here right now. Yep. Hallelujah. He's a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. Hallelujah. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. If you have your 
heavenly language, would you begin to just pray in your heavenly language right now, that perfect prayer. Perfect prayers, perfect prayers, releasing perfect prayers. No more. I hear the Lord saying, no more. It's over with. It's over with. It's over with. Hallelujah. Not by might. It is not by power, but it's by the Spirit of Almighty God right now. He's a consuming fire. He's a loving God. His loving kindness. That's why we came. His loving kindness. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, ah, come on. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ crucified on the cross. Hallelujah. We give you our best praise. We give you our best praise. I give you my highest praise, God. Thank you for healing. Yes, Thank Lord. you for healing. Thank you for liberty. Yeah, come on. Thank you for wholeness. Hallelujah. You're a holy God. He's a holy God. He loves us and it's already done. But I say thank you, Jesus. It's already done. Every assignment that's come against your mind right now, I resist it by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Is, yeah. I Thank resist you, intellectualism. Yep. And I say faith yeah, hit the, arise you, Jesus. and your enemies be scattered. Faith arise and your enemies be scattered right now. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Ma'am, over here in the back, you're standing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Keep God has called you. Spirit. He's called you to Begin run to in a fresh tongues. avenue with a number of people. I see you running like in a heat of people. And the Lord's causing victory to happen and momentum to happen through that. You have a very creative eye and a creative discovery gift. You have a gift of creative discovery. And as you begin to see things, there'll be photographs you take, there'll be things you do, and you begin to bring graphic order to it. God has called you with a creative gift of discovery. And there's going to be this fresh breath of, how can I say it, breakthrough that begins to happen as you begin to walk out this calling that God's called you into. You're right on it right now. I see people coming around. Uh, there's been a couple that have faded into the, into the distance, and that's okay. It's not like they're gone. They just separated a little bit, and that's normal. It's not a negative thing, but what I see with it is God is putting you into a pack or like a heat of people that's going to get some things done, and there's a creative, uh, a creative flair to it. I don't hope that makes sense to you. But what I see on you is creative flair. I see creative ability in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I have to ask, are you married? Okay, all right. I'll pray for you in Jesus' name. I speak life over you in the name of Jesus, that the right person comes at the right time, and it's not a missed opportunity or a, um, or a wrong opportunity. In Jesus' name, I speak that over your life for perfect order. You have the joy of the Lord all over you. Looking at you makes me light up. Like, yeah, she's got joy. I bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you, woman of God. You're awesome. Praise God. Have we met before? Okay, well, I bless you. That's cool. God bless you. Praise God. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hey, right here with the sunglasses, in Jesus' name. I speak favor and goodness to you. The Lord has literally already healed some things inside your heart and your physical body. I see God healing things in you as you're sitting there. God's working on a process with you right now, and you've been asking, God, where is the next phase, the next step? Now what? Where do I go now, God? And God's saying, I'm right here with you, and I'm going to take you all the way through it in Jesus' name. This is going to work. The steps you took previously, although some of them were not perfect, he still got you to where you needed to be. You're still where you need to be, and now you're going to launch forward, and God's going to begin to unhook some things in your mind and meet hooks that have been in you that are going to be literally removed by the Spirit of God, and victory is going to flow now in Jesus' name. I bless you right now. It is well with you in Jesus' name. All is well in the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, Karis rocks. I like it here. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we don't, when we walk around, it's like the Holy Ghost leaves if we're having fun while we're ministering. Do you guys know that too? 
You know, God likes to have fun. If the meeting's boring for me, it'll be boring for you. If I don't enjoy myself, you sure aren't going to enjoy the meeting. Praise God. I enjoy it when we do these things. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sir, with the flannel shirt right here, uh, you're holding that little girl. I, I see that the Lord, uh, there's been a battle that tries to come at your mind at times. Wham. I just see it try to jump on your mind and try to lock you down in uh, certain ways by over-processing and all these things. And I just want to say to you something really simple. Uh, God is setting you free of that right now. I mean, you are like an awesome guy. You've got the hand of God in you. You've got so much potential. And sometimes if you could see yourself the way God sees you, you'd be like, whoa, hey, what's up? I mean, you'd walk into a room strutting. It was with, not with arrogance, but with confidence because God's put a lot of confidence inside you that is yet to be realized. And sometimes analyzing or overanalyzing waters down that confidence God wants to give you just in pure faith. And so I bless you right now in Jesus' name. You are God's man. You are a marked warrior in the kingdom. And all these cares and any care that's tried to attach to you, we detach from you. We remove it from you in Jesus' name. Praise God. I like, you're a good man. I bless you, sir. There's a lot of good people at Karis. Yeah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I see the arts coming alive beyond what they have in Karis. Daniel, you've literally fathered and ushered in a movement of arts in this Bible college. I believe that's going to quadruple. I believe things are going to quadruple in the arts, creativity. Yes, there's, there's a drama. Yes, there's going to be uh, media and all these things. And I don't even know what it totally is, but the production is going to quadruple. It's going to quadruple. And you're going to ride the wave of that. God's called you to do it. So the arts are coming even more here, guys. Get ready for it. The arts are going to explode out of this place. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise God. I don't know how to say this any better too, but here's what I see in my spirit. So I'm just going to say what I sense in my spirit. There's going to come a wave of, of fire through Karis. I don't know how to say it. I think it's going to be like people saying it's a decision. I'm going to press in because, you know, it's not like God's sovereignly going to do something. That's not at all what I'm saying. But I really believe that God is going to begin uh, speaking to hearts and different people at the same time. And I see something's getting ready to literally burst here. Something's getting ready to burst here. Karis, not just through Andrew's ministry and all these things, Karis is going to become a globally recognized hot spot. Hot spot. People that know Andrew and don't know Andrew. It's going to be a hot spot. And I see this happening, and I believe that it's, it's much sooner than we think, even in the next year. I think there's something coming that it's almost like the, there's a lot of weight put on things, and then it's going to burst out of it. And it's going to come out like with fire. And there's going to be a new form of fire in Karis. It's going to be powerful. There's been a lot of teaching, and teaching's powerful, and you must have it. But that teaching now is going to turn into a revelation. When teaching turns into revelation, now you can become a demonstration. Where there's pure fire and a glorification. People getting healed over here. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So that's happening. I just felt that word for the ministry here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the great I am. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, amen. I like you. A lot of prayer inside you, woman of God. You're a worshiper. I see you singing in your kitchen. And whether or not you sing well, I don't know. But I see you singing in your kitchen. I see you kind of dancing around in your kitchen when nobody's looking. I see you doing that. I see things happening in your kitchen. And the Spirit of God is there. He's working with you. And he says, I like your singing. I like your prayer. I like your thoughts towards me. I'm pleased. That's what I see when I look at you. I'm pleased. I bless you, Jesus name. It's true. Praise God. You just see stuff, you know? The reflection of his glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, there's Brandon. Good to see you, Brandon. Praise God. Brandon came up to me the first day I was at Karis, and he said, uh, he said, I prayed for years that you'd be here. I prayed for years that you'd be here. And he said, today that prayer is fulfilled. I said, here I am, you know. And I, I actually was just kind of like, oh, you know. You know what? I've been to a lot of ministry things and ministers conferences. I've never been to anything like Andrew Womack's ministers conference. First of all, you got Daniel. 
But really though, at the minister's conference, it was such a spirit of sweetness and preferring one another. I'd never seen that. And uh, it wrecked me. I said, Lord, if you want me to just go pitch a tent over there in the acres on Karis, I'll stay here. I'll do whatever you want me to do. This place is awesome. And uh, he said, I have work for you to do all over. You just come back to Karis. So we come to Karis to tank up. We sneak in the back sometimes when Daniel's preaching and all that. We like to just hang out. We right now have the last itinerant youth conference left in America. In 2019, we have 19 youth conferences all over the country in major cities. And we literally met with the leaders of Acquire the Fire, Teen Mania, all that, and we got their blessing and started a totally different entity. And many people said, we wanna go, we wanna help with that from some of that, that organization. And we said, great. And so we're doing that, and I'm telling you, the Lord gave me a word, and here's the reason we're doing it. The Lord gave me a word before Trump was elected. And uh, you know, I know what he told you, Marcus, but <laughs> before, uh, before Trump got elected and all that, I thought, God, is Trump gonna win? And the Lord literally said, so the Lord said, I want you to go to Trump Tower. And I said, okay. And so I went to Trump Tower. Heather and I went and stayed at Trump Tower. We're in Trump Tower looking out the window and thinking, this is so amazing. I said, God, is he gonna be president? Is this man gonna be president? Is that, you sent me here to be the prophet, didn't you? You're gonna tell me, and thou shalt declare the next president. You know, because God speaks in old English, right? Thou shalt declare it. And uh, when I was in that place, he said, I have not graced you to know that. I'm like, what am I doing here? And he said, I have called you to intercede for this man every day. I said, okay. And he said, but I've told someone else about it. I said, can I get a cue? I mean, nothing. And so I'm sure some people knew by the spirit, but uh, when that happened, before that happened, I began to recognize that I said, God, is America going to go down? Are we going to take a hit? What's happening? And it was over a New Year's service, and I walked up, and the Lord said, no, I have a word that you're going to release tonight. And I said, okay. And he said, tell the people that no, there's going to be another wave of turnaround with politics. And then he said, because the young lions are coming. The young lions are coming. And I said, what does that mean? And he said, they're very, they're very young right now. They're young. He said, but that generation, they ain't like your generation. They ain't like any generation. The young lions are coming. And they're not going to care what you think about this or that. They're not going to be politically correct about the Holy Ghost like so many of our culture has been. If you would like to speak in tongues, there's a room for you. I want to do a live broadcast where we just speak in tongues for an hour because of that stupidity. Praise God. I'm not going to insult the Holy Ghost like that. I choose him, not people. And so he said the young lions are coming, and he began to show me that there's going to be another generation that comes, and they are going to say, we don't care what you guys have messed up. We don't care how bad it is. We will do whatever it takes to see it through. And the counterfeit of that same spirit is when you see all this social justice warrior stuff. That's the counterfeit. That's the rebellion. But first the counterfeit, then the real. The young lions are coming. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And that's why we're doing youth conferences all over the country. Because we decided not to be PC with the Holy Ghost. We have a weird, unique uh, uh, Holy Ghost ability. We work with like every denomination. All of them. We're not just in this circle, that circle. We're not in Word of Faith. We're not in the Grace Circle. We're not in Pentecostal Circle. We're not in just Baptist. We're in all of it. All of it. Because we're giving them something that a lot of them don't get anywhere. And uh, so be praying for us. It's called Kingdom Youth Conference. And uh, we're doing that. And that'll be here next summer. And Daniel mentioned it. But it's, it's a powerful deal. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Sir, you carry a gift of wisdom. Uh, this sir right here. Uh, I just bless you. You carry a gift of wisdom. And uh, you're like a walking book of James that's filled with love. I speak life over you in Jesus' name. The favor of God is on your life. I bless you. All is well, even at home. All is well. God's got his hand on all that. It's going to work out, brother. 
Thank you, Jesus. Sir, right here, much learning, much understanding. Uh, uh, with the beard, yes, much learning. That's you, brother. Much learning, much understanding. God is using you in a very inspirational way. You have a lot of inspiration and drive on the inside of you to really just accomplish and do things. And, and I can see you also when you're in the mode to talk, you'll talk and you actually have a lot of humor. And uh, the thing with it is, though, is that God really wants to harness that and focus you so you can be very effective for the long run. Very effective for the long run. And so when you get serious, like you're being serious now in, in the, the mindset of the school and all the things you're doing, God is going to literally amplify that gift inside you. And now I see you wearing a suit and tie and all these things. And the Lord says to you, some of the things you think you're going to do will be exactly the opposite of what I've anointed you to do when you get out of this place. So stay flexible because it's going to be a fun ride. I bless you in Jesus' name. All is well with you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we all stretch our hands towards Marcus? It's the second time the Holy Ghost has shined a light on you for me, Marcus. In Jesus' name. We just call that ministry to life in the proper timing of the Lord. We call that ministry to live in the proper timing of the Lord, that it would multiply forward in Jesus' name. I just say over this ministry, let's all just say, Marcus, live. Ministry, live in Jesus' name. Now, I just released that to you, brother. I'm in agreement with you. You are going to be a ministry household name. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. We all doing good? Praise God. Boy, Heather's laying it out here. Praise Jesus. Well, if we want to, I suppose the Karis ministry team could come up. Is that okay? Should we do that? If the Karis uh, prayer ministers want to come up, Heather's still ministering over here with some of the people. But if you want to uh, receive prayer from the Karis ministry team, nobody has to go without getting prayer, getting ministered to. Uh, they're here for you, and they will give the devil a chop to the throat. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. I just want to take a minute, too, while Joseph is here, um, as you're coming, uh, to also, Joseph, tell them about Voice of God. Okay. And what you're doing with Voice of God conferences. Happy to. Yeah. Happy to. Voice of God is, uh, we have a number of conferences and they culminate towards Voice of God. We start with the youth conferences and the youth conferences is kind of a, a wide net that gets people introduced to the Holy Ghost, gets them baptized in the Spirit. Voice of God is a conference that we're going to do a campaign on next year. We're doing two more this year. We'll have one in um, Ohio and one in uh, Tennessee. And Voice of God is a prophetic conference. We just don't call it that because it freaks people out, you know. And so we just say, hey, we're coming in. It's a Voice of God conference. We're going to teach. We're going to train. And we partner with churches and people come. And then we display the gifts of the Spirit. We bring in special guest speakers. Daniel's going to be joining us for some of them. And uh, it really is to amplify the gifts of God. We also do another conference called the 521 Conference. And the 521 conference is a, a five-fold ministry conference and the 21 gifts. How many know there's 21 gifts of the Spirit and five, fold, five, five of those gifts, the governmental gifts, govern the 21? They help lead them. They direct them. They guide them. So we called the conference 521. So it's for the body of Christ to be raised up in their gifts and empowered and imparted to, to activate and do them. So that's the two conferences we do. Voice of God is a prophetic conference. Man, we prophesy till the end of time. We speak over people. We do a lot of things. So we got that coming up tomorrow. We have one in Marion, Ohio. Marion, Ohio, we're coming for you tomorrow. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, this ministry is doing a lot of exciting things, and we're just so blessed to have them here today. They're also going to be back on August the 20th. 20... The 30th. 30th. Yep. Uh, 30th of August. They'll be back here at the Healing School. And uh, you know, Joseph, there's something so strategic about what you and Heather are involved in because I believe not only are you involved with Kingdom Youth, but there's something of a divine connection uh, connecting generations Come on. through your ministry. Wow. You know, the young people, the young lions you, you spoke to, uh, what about the old lions? Come on. They'll get devoured without the, the, young, the old lions. Would you, would you talk on that just yeah. for a second? It says in Proverbs that the glory of old men is their gray hair. 
Yeah. The glory of young men is their strength. Right. And the strength of young men is their ambition, their ability to do things. But without the glory of the old men's gray hair, which represents their wisdom, yeah. they have no direction. And that strength will go and burn this world down or join the wrong movement or not do the right thing. And the young are the young lions. And they need the glory of the old, which is their wisdom. Yeah. And the old uh, need to be connected to the young. They do. In order to raise them up. They do. Yeah. Yeah. So this is exciting, you guys, because there is no generational gap in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That idea of a generation gap is a man-made thing. But in the kingdom of God, there's no gap. Jesus already filled that. He stood in the gap. He's our intercessor, and the gap is filled. So there's not even a generational gap age-wise no. in the Holy Ghost. No, there's not. Amen? So no, there's, there's something very strategic about what God is doing all throughout the earth. And we're just so grateful for Karis Bible College, for uh, Joseph Z Ministries, for all these ministries being able to work together and to do something that's greater than any one of us, and that is see the kingdom of God established in the earth and his will being done here as it's being done in heaven. <laughs> you know, I really believe that one of the things God's doing right now is he is showing us new wineskins. Come on. You know, we've been praying for the spirit of God to break out of us, not yeah. just to be in us, but to be flowing out of us in power and demonstration. Amen. And there is literally new wineskins that God is showing us because you know what? We can't put the new wine in the same old skins. Come on, Daniel. It's not going to contain it. Amen. So God is raising up new methods and new ways and new expressions yeah. and new things based on very, very old principles that are as solid as rock, and that is his word. Come on. His word will never change, but how he gets his word out is going to be changing by the Spirit of God all the time. That's right. So we have to remain flexible. Yeah. And I love the fact that Joseph and Heather have committed to being flexible in the Holy Ghost and following after the things of God in whatever way the Lord is showing them. Right now they're getting ready to get on XM Radio, and I'm telling you what, it's so exciting, Joseph, to have you and Heather here at Karis Bible College. Oh, that's an honor. Dude. And ministering right here on this stage. Oh, man. Praise God. It's an honor. It is an honor having you here, it's bro. It's an honor. Daniel, Amen. to be with you is an honor. I with you. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, let's stand up, would you, those of you who are still here. And uh, I want to just dismiss us in prayer. And then we're going to be here just as long as we need to be here. But man, I'm telling you what, there is more power in a Holy Ghost moment than a lifetime of counseling. Come on. Amen? Amen? There is more power in a Holy Ghost moment when spirit and truth are activated in our lives than any other kind of power in the face of the earth. And so we thank you, Lord God, for, your, for the power of the gospel. We bless Joseph and Heather being here today. We bless uh, Joseph Z Ministries and Kingdom Youth and Voice of God and uh, the women's conferences and all the various areas, Lord, that they are involved in. We just come into agreement with what you're doing through them. We bless them. We bless what you're doing in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for this place, for Karis Bible College, and for the expansion that's happening right now. And Lord God, we believe that there is just fresh fire that is going to be released in this place and flowing through us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for thank the teaching you, of your word, you, but we thank you for the revelation that has been given to us by the Holy Ghost for the purpose of demonstration. Now, God, we give you all the praise for all that's going to happen in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you. Thank you again for joining us on the Internet. We're going to be back next week, next Thursday, 1 o'clock, Colorado time. Make sure you join us and tell some friends to join with you. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Those of you here in the auditorium, you are dismissed, but we're going to be here as long as we need to be here. And we are so grateful for you being a part of what's been happening today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.